for the insulation, I went through way more than I ever guessed I would. Cause back here, it looks like you can only put two layers in. So like one inch and then you're up to the ribs, but they have, it's like a C channel with a flange out. So it's built up here. So you can actually run a third layer on almost everything. So if you put a straight edge across here, I'm clearing the third layer. As soon as I figured that out, then I added a third layer everywhere that I could. So we're at like 30 mils of insulation, so a little over an inch. Whereas before I would have just had those one inch. They covered 75% of the area maximum. And using a thinner, like the 10 mil material versus going to, like saying just getting a one inch foam. What was cool is you could slide stuff up in here and stick the first layer everywhere. And then you just leave the backing on your second layer and slide it up in behind pieces. So it allowed you to fill inside of stuff a lot easier with the uh, um, thinner layers. I have four layers here. I could put five for the cabinets, but I want space that the wires aren't pinched behind. Because if they're pinched, there's more chance they'll rub. And I don't really feel like burning the truck off. I had only a couple of places, like see here where the rivets hold the frame together? Then the wiring, it was war. Oh, not man. not through any coatings, but through the loom. So I actually put foam in here to keep the harnesses up. Right. That way they can't get on these rivets. Yeah. So I went through all the factory wiring and patched up anything that was so-so. And then all of this here new loom on both sides is to go to all the cubby lights. The box here above the closet gonna have a LED light in there and then you did these different for positive and negative yeah I tried to keep it as idiot proof it. <laughs> as factory oh. as possible <laughs> <laughs> well the thing is you know you go to change a light now you're cutting and shrink tube and are like crimp putting stuff oh. together yeah I, that kind of bothered I don't know but oh, so you put LED bulbs in the old domes yeah that made them like three times brighter at this point I'm just gonna leave the original dome light I can reach in and turn it on. If I forget, it's an LED light, so it's not creating too much heat. Right. I don't know enough about audio, so like it has a volume control back here. Yeah. I might eliminate it. My original thought was to eliminate the volume control and put the old rheostat bunk heater control, but you can't get it. Cause then it would just, I could put the, the same, it, it, you wouldn't know it's a bunk heater, right? Yeah but you can't get that controller anymore. So I have to use the newer electronic controller. So I, I don't know if I'll leave it in or not. I'd like to talk to someone that knows more about it or I gotta do some research. Oh, I guess on the insulation in here, I stuffed this all with, yeah, it's actually uh, a ridge foam. It's not the tar impregnated stuff, it's the closed cell. Cause you, you gotta really stuff it both ways but I can't get anything along the bottom. And then I say, you know, that's probably a good thing because if there is any leaks, that's where the water will go. And you don't want to have foam holding moisture on you. The Wabas or the S bar yep. comes with lots of wire. So if I decide to mount it over here on the side of the cubby or here on the panel, I can easy do it. And I ran it all inside all the way around down that corner post. So that works really good. Got the Obasto, I'm gonna put it, well it's fastened here. And then my circuit that's gonna do like the fridge and everything, the Obasto, I think I'm gonna put the fuse block here. And then the inverter is supposed to go on that wall there. So then that gives me enough space in here. My thought is like if I have any battery chargers or power tool stuff because you can plug those right into the inverter then because I can't really stack this full of stuff otherwise your HVAC can't pull air because here's your inlet for the air you can't run your Obasto out here so you got to run the Obasto over to the other side and I figured if I'm going to run piping over there anyway I have to buy more so I may as well go to the 90 mil which is three and a half which is factory size and then replumb everything. And then that lets me blow with the HVAC over there onto the floor so you don't get the cold floor. And I did have it 
I should have maybe left it in, but I had it in here and I had the fan running to see kind of what the airflow is like. Yeah. And I can get good airflow over there. Now I had, had to rejig, originally I had a, this elbow here and it was too tight. I was scared I might, with time it would break something yeah. and it would rattle off of the uh, tin. So I changed it to a T here. Now all my air blows out the one vent. So yeah. I have to get a damper so I can adjust it and then just lock it okay. to cut this one. That's all Webasto branded duct. Yes. And I got it from Heatco or something, dot com in the States. When I ran this over here, I still got to get straps to hold everything in place. But I put in the, uh, I don't know if I can pop this grill off. So I can totally close it so it can't blow any air in under the bed. Or I can just, you know, crack it to get a wee bit of airflow so that I can keep things warm under the bed. Because you know how it is, your gloves will be froze. And there's there is a return in here. So you can just, it'll, it can only cycle a little bit of air through. Now the one thing that does happen when I got that fan running on high, it does blow out the Webasto some too. If I have to, I can put a one-way valve in there, but there's, it has so much airflow that even though it's blowing out of there some, like it's really blowing out everywhere else. So these I did like the factory style and then I put red lenses on them and then a red LED inside. Because I originally had the white LEDs and then they, they went just a hint, like faded red or whatever. The red ones were even brighter LEDs than the white ones, so I wasn't gonna complain. And I got the brackets bent up. They at least look like they used to install in Canada. And it worked out really good, like with those rivet nuts yeah. to put them in. Like that's minty, like you could easily do this on an existing truck. Well, there's actually a wire coming out here in the harness and one in each corner. So the one in each corner is, is one switch, is one circuit, and the one in the center is another circuit. So oh, one thing I should mention on these lights, because I had such a time getting paint, I was gonna paint the hucks before I installed them, and I gave up, lost patience. So these are stainless, and then I drilled out the old ones for, cause I just had my bottom lights before, and I added stainless there. So I'm gonna have stainless out each side on the lights for the huck that holds this, the second layer so that your screws aren't just going in through a single layer of your skin to double. And then I'm gonna use stainless to put all my door latches on too. And I actually saw some pictures of some guys that have done that, so. And the uh, vents, same thing because I don't have paint, so I just simply cleaned them up and installed them and pulled the guts out. This is the, we'll have to put it on the Amazon link thing or something because there's no cool brand name on this stuff. You can get cheaper stuff with no tin foil on it, but the cool thing about the tin foil is it does reflect heat. But your first layer of the Noiko, which is over here, this is the hardest layer to stick on. And so you want to have a little bit of heat, but if it gets too hot, this stuff is so sticky. It touches and done. Or if it folds on itself, then you can never get it apart. So you're better off doing small pieces and sticking it on. And this is 80 mil. And I used one, two, three, four, five out of nine. So I used four boxes. I have a little bit left over, but I have not done the floor yet. And I did a thorough job. So a 63 inch stand up, if you're doing the floor, for sure five boxes. So that's 180 square feet. Yeah, but then the insulation, 24, but they're only 28 square feet per. So, so well, a little less, but almost 700 square feet. Yeah. So I got a full set of those full set of latches. I will say they're a lot cheaper than going to Peterbilt. Stainless hinges all around, so those are the cabin bunks all the same. Those are the interior ones. Those are your inside latches. Yeah. And then you get the lock set from Peterbilt. Headlights, because I got the double squares, get all the pots, 
um, they, they have the adjusters they're only a few bucks a piece and the um, bezels and then I got because I need new yeah. Ooh, I got a bunch of other stuff in here too oh yeah all your springs yeah. and I got an air suspension one because I have a redundant light that no idea what it does yeah. I just started ordering everything I thought that I might need <laughs> and uh, then look the other way when I ran the card so here's my smoker windows I haven't had them open yet but they finally got in uh, oh I think I waited two or three months before because they're back ordered yeah and then all the door seals but that's off this was an Amazon one and I did take it out and check it. It is the same thing. Yeah. Are they going to last as long? I have no idea. But in 20 feet, if you buy two, you can do three doors. But you'd have to have two joints. Yeah, which you're going to have a joint anyway. So it's yeah. whatever. So I got four because I'm just going to do one per door. Oh, and I forgot. Yeah, I got new um, new uh, window winders because my plate. They're, they're split, right? So a new one. Now their latches absolutely do not, even in the remotest form, match factory. Cranks. The cranks. But they, they're they sure a handy joint. Uh, the thing is, like the convenience of being able to go one place, order what you need, and get it, it's worth something. Anyway.